Glory be to God. God is good. All the time. All the time. Yeah, I, I was just laughing at myself when I was seated there. When the MC was here, she was she helped me with my message exactly. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I said, God, you're so nice. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, uh, it's like a, it was like a connection where the God's Spirit has already connected the message. So it means that my message is right. Amen. Amen. Because it, it, it's a confirmation. Amen. Uh, today we are on the book of Luke chapter 21. Glory be to Jesus. Luke chapter 21. And our title is... Our title is... Uh, Okay, I, don't worry. I, I, I'll, I'll give you the title. <laughs> Luke chapter 21. An occasion for testimony. Amen. That's our title. An occasion for testimony. Or occasion for testimony. An occasion for testimony. That is our title. title. Hallelujah. So we're going to read Luke chapter 21. Glory be to Jesus. Let's start from verse 8. Yes. Let's start from verse 8. The Bible says, And he said, Take heed that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And the time has drawn near. Therefore do not go after them. But when you hear the wars and commotions, and do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. Uh -huh. 10. Let's keep going. But when you hear of, sorry, 10, then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The next one, 11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences and there will be fearful signs and great signs from heaven. But before these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Now comes our title of the message. 13. But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Now you hear our title. Verse 11. Uh, verse 18, sorry. We just did a, a little bit. Stay there a little bit. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Verse 18 says, But it will turn out for you. I want you to, to say these words with me. But when you are saying them, say, but it will turn out for me as an occasion for testimony. Let's go. But it will turn out for me as an occasion for testimony. One, one more time. But it will turn out for me as an occasion for testimony. Okay, let's continue. 13, let's go to 14. Therefore, set it not in your hearts not to me, me, sorry, meditate beforehand on what you will answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends. And they will put some of you to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. Uh -huh. Let's keep going. But not a hair of your head shall be lost. By your patience, possess your souls. Let us pray. Amen. Put it again from 21 to start from 8. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We worship you. Give you the praise. We give you the honor. Give you the glory. You are God. You are not men. We are gathered here, my God, to worship you, my God. Let this day be a day to remember. Let this day that you come down. Answer us, my God. Deliver us from all things which are happening in our lives. As you have spoken, so shall it be. It will turn out as an occasion for testimony. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, take heed. People are going to say a lot of stuff, a lot of things. Hallelujah. But God is saying, don't worry about that. So I'll start from verse 10. The Bible says, and he said to them, nation, we are seeing it happening right now. Nations are rising against nations. We know what is happening between North Korea, amen, amen, South Korea. We know what is happening between Russia 
and the Americans. We know what is happening between Afghanistan and all these things. Hallelujah. So the Bible is saying, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes. We are experiencing earthquakes now, right now happening. Hallelujah. Fires, they are coming from nowhere, destroying. Hallelujah. So all these things, God said, we shall. Amen, amen. So it goes to say, uh, verse, we are on verse what, 11. And there shall be great earthquakes in various places and famines. We are hearing of famines and pestilence, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But all these things, I mean, but before these things, sorry, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogue and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Hallelujah. So the Bible is saying, all these things, now let us go to our uh, 11, uh, 13. Yeah, make, thank you very much for making the book. <laughs> Amen. But all these things as they are happening, it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Hallelujah. Maybe you have got a Red Sea. The Red Sea, when the Israelites saw the Red Sea, they said, Our life is finished here. That's where we are buried here. But God made it turn out as an occasion for a testimony. So what you are going through, you are not going to die there, but God will turn it out as an occasion for testimony. God wants you to have a testimony. A testimony does not come if something is not happening. Amen, amen. So whatever is happening in your life, it will turn out as an occasion for a testimony. Are you looking for a job? Is it very difficult? Amen, amen. God will turn it out as an occasion for a testimony. In other words, it's a what? It's a need for a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why you are going through what you are going through. There is a need for a testimony. So how does a testimony come? You have to go through something. So the Red Sea was there to promote the children of Israel so that today we can talk about a testimony. So it will turn out for you as an occasion for a testimony. Your people are hating you, but there's a turnout. Hallelujah. Whatever you are going through, there shall be a testimony. Hallelujah. So it's an occasion for a testimony. You have a testimony out of what you are going through. You have a testimony out of what is happening in your life. You shall testify the goodness of God. You shall testify the greatness of God. Hallelujah. So all these things that they are happening, it, it, it's an occasion. It's a special event. Amen, amen. God is, God, when to God is a special event. Amen, amen. So it was a special event for Pharaoh to ill treat the children of Israel because God had wanted to show, wanted to show Pharaoh how powerful he was. Amen. amen, amen. For God to show Pharaoh how powerful he is, there has to be an occasion. Amen. So the occasion was made bricks, mortar with your own, hallelujah, saliva, saliva, hallelujah. There's no more water here. We are not going to supply. Amen. And the Red Sea was there. It was an occasion for a testimony. I want to tell you whatever you are going through, it's an occasion for a testimony. You shall testify in the name of Jesus. It's an opportunity for testimony. Hallelujah. When people hate you, it's an opportunity for a testimony. If you are divorced, it's an opportunity for a testimony. If things are not going in your right in your life, it's an occasion for testimony. God wants you to have a testimony. That's why you are going through what you are going through. God does not want you to die where you are, but he wants you to have a testimony. It's an occasion for a testimony. Hallelujah. All these things you see, you hear. The Bible says you shall hear Amen. of earthquakes. Yes. It is not saying you shall be in an earthquake. <laughs> you heard of tsunami. Hallelujah. You heard of all these things happening. You just hear them. But to you, it will turn out as an occasion for a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people, they don't want you married to your wife. They don't want you married to your husband. They try by all means to do whatever they can do to separate you, but it will turn out as an occasion for a testimony. It will strengthen your relationship with your life. It will strengthen your marriage. Hallelujah. So whatever the devil throws at you, you must know it's an occasion for a testimony. If you are clever enough, you say, what, God, what do you want to come out of this? Hallelujah. Because I shall have a testimony when I come out. Little did our brother, Joseph, he didn't know that putting me in the pit is an occasion for a testimony. Hallelujah. You put me under strain. You put me under pressure. You put me, hallelujah. It turns out as an occasion for a testimony. Hallelujah. He was in prison. Hallelujah. He was in prison. 
uh, he was in Potiphar's house, everything was going wrong for him, but God turned it around. God knew the beginning. God knew where he was taking Joseph because Joseph, your dream you see when you are talking about your dream your dream means you have to go into the pit. Your dream means you have to be, uh, to be in Potiphar's house. Your dream means you've been in prison and in, from prison it's a location for testimony. It's an opportunity for a testimony. It's a need for a testimony to change your life. You need to go through some stuff. So whatever you are going through is an occasion of a testimony. Hallelujah. How did Joseph end? He ends up being a prime minister. How did he come up with a prime minister? After going through occasion, after occasion. Hallelujah. It was an occasion for a testimony. I'm telling you, whatever you are going through, it's an occasion for a testimony. Hallelujah. The people, when we pray, we say, God, I need a testimony. Don't pray such a prayer. Because if you need a testimony, there has to be an occasion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Even when there's no occasion, there's no testimony. Hallelujah. Testimony, there has to be an occasion for a testimony. So there has to be all these things. Gossipers must gossip about you. Haters must hate you. Hallelujah. People must spit at you. People must hate you. But it's an occasion for a testimony. What happened to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? He went through hell. Hallelujah. Little did the devil knew that this is an occasion for a testimony. On the third day, he rose. What did he do? He walked again on earth and he, until he went to heaven. It was an occasion for a testimony so that he would send the Holy Spirit to us. We could not have the Holy Spirit in with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Jesus, that was an occasion for a testimony. So, whatever you are going through, that God has not left you. God still knows you. God still loves you. But you are going through, it's an occasion of a testimony. I always tell you, if you want to know that people like you, love you, there has to be an occasion. Hallelujah. Of a testimony. Where you see, do they love me? Do they just say they like me? Hallelujah. Amen, amen. So, we, I want to, to tell you, John the Bab, John, you know John, they put him at the Patmos. Hallelujah. Isolation brings revelation. Amen, amen. amen. They put him in a place of isolation, but isolation brought the revelation. The man who wrote the book of Revelation, he wrote the book of Revelation, no eyes, but he could write. It was an occasion for a testimony. You made John blind. You, John will have spiritual eyes. Spiritual eyes can write. Hallelujah. So it was an occasion for a testimony. So I want you to know that isolation. Isolation. Amen, amen. When you are isolation, isolation brings revelation. Amen, amen. People put you in an isolated place. They say, ah, you are dumb, you are done. They don't know that God will reveal his, hallelujah, himself to you. So everything you are going through is an occasion for a testimony. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. People, people will ask you, how did you make it? How did you come out? How will they know how you, did you make it? How will they know how did you come out if you did not go through it? That's why Paul says, everything that is happening in your life, it's happening so that you can give someone a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants you to be rich. God wants you to be everything, but you have to go through some stuff. Amen. amen, amen. Before you come to the testimony. So everything that is happening in your life, it is an occasion for a testimony. Hallelujah. So I said, isolation brings revelation. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. So when your people, your friends and everyone, hallelujah, cut you off, ah, yeah, 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 it's time for revelation. Amen, amen. amen. That's time for revelation. When you are on your own, that's time for revelation. When no one uh, greets you, time for revelation. That's time you seek God more. And at the end you thank God. That thank God you are wonderful. God you are good. Because it was just an occasion. It was an opportunity for me to testify the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Some marriages cannot, can be all, 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 all very rocky. Hallelujah. But things can get bad at your workplace. And the only person you find who gives you comfort is the wife you, are not, you, you don't love. Amen, amen. So it's an occasion for a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants to, to make you, your, your house better, your house good. But for it to be better, someone has to lose job, his job. Hallelujah. So that you can now see that it's better to love my wife. Hallelujah. She's the only person who can love me when no one is, is on, on my side. Amen. God teaches you. Hallelujah. You, you can be working today, but God can take off your job. 
Hallelujah. And your wife will be the one working the next time. Then you start to respect your wife better than you respect her right now. So everything that happens in your life, it's an opportunity. It's an occasion for testimony. Amen. You know what? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So some, some husbands divorce their wives thinking that uh, she's gone, she's dead. But did, did they know that it's an occasion for, for what? A testimony. Hallelujah. There are many women looking after their children on their own. Hallelujah. If it became an occasion for a testimony. Hallelujah. So things happen, rough things happen in our lives, but it's an opportunity. It's an occasion. It's a reason. It's a need for a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you see your life going like a roller coaster, remember what we said the last time. Hallelujah. It's a merry-go-round, ups and down. Make sure God wants to do something. I always say, if God wants to do something wonderful, he starts with the difficulty. But if you want to do something very, very wonderful, he starts with the impossibilities. When things are too rough, you know that God wants to do something very, very wonderful. Yes. Hallelujah. So it's an occasion for a testimony. You yes. don't die. Yes. Amen, amen. You are not dying. You are getting closer to your, to, your, to, to, your, to your healing. You are getting closer. But things are rough. But this rough thing is an occasion for a testimony. We have our brother. Our brother is sent by God. Brother Jonah, go and preach in Nineveh. Brother Jonah is running to Tashish. Hallelujah. He didn't know. The snake, sorry, the, 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 the fish. Hallelujah. Swallowed him. Ah, he prayed in the belly of the fish. So it was an occasion for testimony. Hallelujah. Now he testifies, he says, I cried with the Lord. It, hallelujah. And God saved me, delivered me out of the mouth of the fish. It was an occasion for a testimony. Are you in the fish belly? Amen, amen. You can be in the fish belly right now, but it's an occasion for a testimony. Amen. God wants you to come out with a testimony. God wants you to testify the goodness of God. God wants you to have an opportunity. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. So I want you to know that you are not dying where you are. Let us go a little bit, hallelujah, as we are still on the occasion of a testimony, hallelujah. So everything that is happening, so the Bible says, therefore, therefore, set it not in your heart, not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer, hallelujah, amen, amen. Hey, are, you, are, you, are you having a, 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 a cosket? Are you having something that is going to court? Are you having your manager tormenting you? Are you having a problem anywhere you are having? So you don't know, ah, uh -huh, it's my sister, sorry, you wrote an exam already. Are you writing an exam? The Bible is saying, therefore, said you not in your heart, not to make debt before and you know what to answer. For I will, ha, ya, ya, I will, God is saying, I will give you a mouth and wisdom. Ha, ya, ya, you get it right. Amen. Don't worry about what is going on with your life. Don't worry. Things are, are not shaping up. Don't worry. You have got the, uh, your money is, is not shaping up. Don't worry. You're having problems there and there. Don't worry about your sicknesses. But the Lord is saying, I will give you a mouth. Hallelujah. I will give you a mouth. If people are tormenting you, if people are, are saying this, uh, some people, they know how to talk. There's some people, they know how, how, how to say things. You cannot say. You cannot stand with them. God is saying, for I will give you a mouth. God wants to give you a mouth. Hallelujah. Your mouth is not your mouth. You are no longer the Zorina we know. You are no longer the grace we know. Hallelujah. Ay, 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 ay. Amen, amen, amen. You are no longer the devil, you know. They are no longer the pastor on you know. Hallelujah. This time there is a change. This time there is a turn. This time things have changed. This time things have taken another turn. Because God said, I will give you a mouth. When you speak, it's no longer you speaking, Israel. Hallelujah. Something is going out to happen. Someone. Hallelujah. You are just Zorina as you are. But when you speak, it's no longer you speaking. God is saying, don't settle it. Don't meditate. Don't think about it. Don't lose sleep about it. All you need to do, walk as Yeshua. For I will give you mother and wisdom. God will give you wisdom. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wisdom. I will give you mother and wisdom. Which all? Ah, yeah, yeah, not some, but all your adversaries. Are you having adversaries? Are you having, hallelujah. That's why I said it will turn out as an occasion for a testimony. God knows you have got adversaries. God knows you have got haters. God knows you have got people who talk about you. But God says, I will give you a mouth and wisdom. And which all? All means all. All means all. All your haters, 
all those who want you dead, all those who want you done, all those who say you cannot get the promotion, all those who say you can never, hallelujah, be two years in your marriage, all those who say, ah, let, let's give them a time, it will not work. God is saying, hallelujah, I will give you a more than wisdom which all your advice will not be able to contradict. Hallelujah. Or resist. Hallelujah. If, if he says yes, no one can say no. What you say, he settles it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are given an opportunity. Now you are given a mouth. Now you are given wisdom that all your adversaries, this is why I, will, I love God. I love God. Hallelujah. God is good. Church is good. Hallelujah. Worshiping God is good. That's why he said, my people are perished because of lack of knowledge. If you have got knowledge, knowing who you are, you will know that the Lord says, I will give you a mouth. I have the mouth of God. Hallelujah. I have the wisdom of God, which all my adversaries, all of them will not be able to contradict. Hallelujah. You can't change it. <laughs> Hallelujah. It goes the way I say it. When I say no, it ends up being a no. Let me tell you, my wife was five, month, five months in a coma here at, at, at Waterloo in, in, in St. Thomas Hospital. Hallelujah. She was five months in a coma. When we went there, five months, I was going uh, each and every time. The uh, situation never changed. So the doctor said to me, can we want to switch off the machine? Just sign. I say, oh, I'm not signing. They say, just sign. I say, I'm not signing. They, I said, I was talking about John 11:4. John 11:4 says, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So every time, per week, I will have six or seven. A week and seven days. But every week, I will have six meetings, a table. Ah, yeah. Did I know there were doctors from America? Did I know there were doctors from Canada? Did I know there were doctors coming as far as Manchester, coming as, as far as Edinburgh, coming as far as Germany? Did I know I sat with them on the table? And while I was on the table, they were telling me to sign. I was saying, John 11, 4, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it each and every Every day, this sickness is not unto death, but for the sun with the glory. So each time, so so, and I'm praying at home. I, I could go out Waterloo Hospital at the bus stop. There was one Friday. That Friday, it was a terrible Friday. Hallelujah! I was going up, going down. You know, if you say you, you don't pray the bus stop, things are okay. Things were too bad. Hallelujah. I, I was praying at the and I was going there. I said, Lord, it took one month. Every day, imagine every day you are having a meeting and you are saying, you are expecting things to change. One month passed by, one month, two weeks, two months passed by, three months passed by. They are still saying, sign, sign. I said, sign until they to explain to me, say, you know what? Why we are saying sign? The machines and all our medication is not working. And my wife was sleeping like this. She cannot turn. She cannot talk. I mean, there was no conversation between me and my wife because she could not turn. She could not talk. Hallelujah. So she was, as she was the first day, she was on the third demand. I said, I'm not signing. John 11 4. John 11 4. Until one day, the doctors from Australia. I saw doctors, hallelujah, some from London Bridge, some from where? They were telling me and their profiles, hallelujah, coming to me, telling me who they were. John 11, 4, John 11, 4, until they, took, they had to go to, there's a chaplain at St. Thomas Hospital. I saw the chaplain, <laughs> not one chaplain, chaplain after chaplain after chaplain, chaplain, they go off, they, they are not, there's a chaplain for Monday, a chaplain. I saw the chaplains coming. I said to the chaplain, do you believe the word of God? He said, yes. He said, he said to me, you know what? He, he, what you are saying is true. But you know, people die. I say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, disputing what you are saying. But all I'm saying, not with my wife. Really, really, hear me well. I know people die. But I'm refusing that my wife is dying. Aye. You understand? Yeah. yeah, I understand. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. So if, I, if you say, let's pray with me, what is your prayer? I'm not praying to God that your will be done. I'm praying not unto death. That's my prayer. So if you want to join me in my prayer, you are joining a prayer, believing that she will wake up and walk again. Yeah. Ah, 
So, so they said, you know, this man, when your wife is sick in such a state, you lose your mind. So to them, I remain who has lost his mind. Everything out of me was lost. So, hallelujah. So the fifth man, yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. The fifth man, there's something started happening. Something started happening. Do you know what happened? <laughs> what happened when my, my wife had to learn how to walk again? Hallelujah. She had to have a Zima frame. Amen. And the funny thing, that surprised the doctors. You understand? When you are sleeping one side, they turn you the other side. Your, your, skin, your skin never peeled. Yeah. Amen, amen. Now, listen. Doctors came. A doctor from Australia, he sat down with me. He said, can you preach to me John 11, 4? <laughs> amen, amen. It was an occasion for a testimony. Listen, one, now, we went to St. Thomas in London Bridge for checkup. Hallelujah. When she was sick, they said the liver is not right. This is not right. We are going to do the operation. We are going to operate this. My wife was never operated of anything. Hallelujah. So what happened to the liver? What happened to anything? I was so I, I went through with, with the head to voice St. Thomas. The doctor said, no, she's not the one. He refused now. This doctor he's refusing. He said, no, she's not the one. Yeah, she's not the one. He, when he was saying she's not the one. Because to him, she never made it. To him, she's dead. But she, had, but she, she has evidence. Hallelujah. The file has evidence. The papers has evidence. So he said to me, can you, I, I give you the names of doctors ah. here in Central London and show them your wife. So it was an occasion for a testimony. He gave me the names. He said, just go and see them. And I'm phoning them one by one. Hallelujah. So for him, he could not believe. So when my wife came out after five months and they transferred her from St. Thomas Hospital to this Newham Hospital. So when she was in Newham Hospital, uh, I said to the, to the doctors there, I don't think my wife will recover here. I want to take her home. <laughs> Listen, we are on them the word. I'll give you a mouth and wisdom which all your, all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. Hallelujah. So, they say to me, you can't take it. I say, I will take it. They say, you can't take it. I say, I will take it. They say, you can't take it. I say, I will take it. Because here, she's, I can see that there is no development here. Hallelujah. She's getting worse. So they said to me, if someone is getting worse in a hospital, where else can she get better? I think when you bring her home, she can get better. So it went on. Hallelujah. We, we started the, 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 this thing on Sunday after church. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Hallelujah. On Wednesday, they finally, they say, ah, oh, you can take your wife. Hi. Hallelujah. So when they said to me, you can take a wife, but they said, so I think they went into a meeting and they say, this man, the only thing we can do, let's give her the wife because she will come with her. Because the condition the wife is in, why worry? Amen, amen. That time I was living in uh, Bridgeland, Bridgeland Road. So I was, it was flats. So I was on the first floor. So they say, how will you get there? I said, I'll get you on my back. <laughs> so we'll get to our floor. So we, we went, they gave me my wife. I, I took the, the, I took a cab. We drove home. We got there. I carried her up on our first floor, hallelujah. So they were saying, who is going to give her a shower? I give her a shower. I will give them, I will cook for her. And we went home. From that day, I think it was, it was in 2007, I think something like that. Up to today, my wife has not gone back with an ambulance. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. She only, she only goes to the days she has given her for checkup. Amen. So we started going there and started blossoming, started coming out. Hallelujah. She came out as a skeleton. You don't pray with the five months in a coma. So I could take her from home. Some people were, were, were looking at this man. Who, who is this? You know when you are too thin. Hallelujah. She was too thin to the bone. So you, 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 you become like too old. Hallelujah. So I was teaching her how to walk. She could walk from here to where Pastor Ron is. She's tired. I said, okay, let's sit. We come back again. Hallelujah. I was going with her, teaching her how to walk, doing everything until she was back. So it was 
an occasion for testimony. And also, the Bible says, Hallelujah, I'll give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. Do you know that no one can resist you? <laughs> Do you know that no one can contradict you when God gives you a mouth? Hallelujah. Yeah. So all we need to do is to worship God, praise God, be righteous, be pure in everything that we do and see what God will do in your life. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Just be a child of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do away with the sin and see what God will do in your life. Hallelujah. Your mouth becomes the mouthpiece of God. You are no longer you who is talking. It's God talking. Hallelujah. Through you. Amen, amen. That's why he says, all your adversaries, hallelujah, will not be able to resist you, hallelujah, will not be able to distend your action. Hallelujah. When you say things happen, amen, amen. amen. You say things happen because you are a champion. You are a child of God. You are more than a conqueror. So he goes on to say, you will be betrayed. Aha, uh -huh, betrayal comes. Even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends. And they put some of you to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. Right, hear that. All these things are happening. But not a hair. <laughs> ah, God is too much. Hallelujah. Not a hair of your head shall be lost. You will not lose even a single hair. Amen, amen. No matter how they hate you, no matter how they talk about you, no matter how they despise you, no matter what they think about you, but not even a single hair shall be lost from me. Hallelujah. So whatever you are going through, it will turn out as an occasion for a testimony. Hallelujah. The Bible says you shall be hated by your brothers. This is exactly what happened to Joseph. Hallelujah. He was hated by his brothers, but they bowed down before him. Hallelujah. Because his dream had to come true, hallelujah. So everything, what you are going through, it will come out as an occasion for a testimony, hallelujah. So it's an opportunity, amen, for you to have a testimony. Don't cry, hallelujah. God bless God, hallelujah. So we need to bless God in whatever is happening in our life. Let us go to Philippians 1, 12. We are finishing our message, hallelujah. It will turn out now, woman of God, amen. What's your name, our MC? Woman of God, I said you were helping me with my message. I said there's a connection. Now here. Thou Paul says, but I want you to know, brethren, <laughs> amen, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. You hear it? It will turn out for you as an occasion for a testimony. Paul says, but I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me, hallelujah, have actually turned for the furtherance of the gospel. Yes, amen, amen. amen. Did, did you know that? That's how the gospel works. You are there to further the gospel. Amen. You understand? Everything that happens in your, our lives, we don't understand. Even in our marriages, we don't understand what's happening in our marriages. Boy, is saying, are, are you still there? Bring it up. Okay, that's okay. Glory be to Jesus. So, amen. Yes. Oh, I can have my Bible. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Be careful. They, it, it tripped. It's the yeah, it's up. Glory to Jesus. So, this is life. Hallelujah. Paul says, I want you to know, if you don't know. He wants us to know. <laughs> um, so, see that, Zorina, you'll be, uh, you'll be here sharing with the women, with the friends. Yes. Hallelujah. So, you tell them, I want you to know. Amen. Amen. That one things which happened to me have turned out as an occasion for a testimony. Hallelujah. So, whatever was happening to our brother, Paul, it turned out as an opportunity. It was an opportunity, hallelujah, for the furtherance of the gospel. That's why today we have the gospel. How did it come? Paul is saying, my brethren, hallelujah. He says what? My I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Hallelujah. That is why 
Paul went through what he went through. Hallelujah. So that is saying, but I want you to know, you need to know this, Amen. brethren. Hallelujah. That the things which happened to me. So I, now I know what is happening in your life, Pastor, Pastor Ronnie. Amen, amen. It's for the furtherance of the gospel. Amen. Because if youngsters are coming tomorrow to tap in, to take after you, they have to know. Amen, amen. What you went through. Amen, amen. So you have to know Paul. He was in chains. He was in prison. Things were not, hallelujah. It was always not a uh, bed of roses. <laughs> amen, amen. So I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me, if I'm to attend to the feathers of the gospel, hallelujah. Let us go to the same chapter, verse 14. Let us go to 14, hallelujah. What did he say? He said, and most of the brethren in the Lord have become confident by my chains. They are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Hallelujah. 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 Because of his chains. Now today we can preach the word of God. In chains also. We can preach the word of God. Under pressure. We can preach the word of God. Under stress. We can preach the God. In distress. We can preach the word of God. In any form of thing. Hallelujah. And most of the brethren in the Lord. Hallelujah. Having become confident. In my chains, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Amen. So whatever you are going through, it's an occasion for a testimony. Whatever is happening in your life, it's an occasion for testimony. You come out with a testimony. You are a child of God. You are a child of destiny. You are an overcomer. No one can stop you. No one contradict you. Let me pray. Father, we thank you. Amen. We bless you. Whatever we are going through, it is an occasion for a testimony. Amen. We'll come out with a testimony. We thank you, my God, for this. We never knew. We didn't know that, my God, it's an opportunity to have a testimony. It's a need to have a testimony. Testimonies will come in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we bless you. We just pray that, Lord, each and everyone in this house, give them a mouth, give them wisdom, that the enemy or the adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist them in the name of Jesus. And you have spoken that not even a single hair from our head shall be lost. We just want to thank you, we just want to bless you. May your name be glorified. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for what, what Paul went through. It has become something that has put the gospel in line. May your name be glorified now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.